I had been playing, I'd been playing basketball really young. Like when I was as, as, as early, as, I, can't, I can't remember the age, but as early as you can play basketball, I was playing basketball. My first basketball memory uh, was when I was four years old and my mom and I were watching the Detroit Pistons versus the Indiana Pacers. Uh, it was a great series, great defensive battle. And, you know, I, I'd be bouncing my ball around uh, throughout the house. My mom would always tell me, sit me down and tell me to watch, watch some film. When I was young, you know, I was pretty good. I was one of the best players on the team. Um, but then, like, when I got into middle school, you know, kids were a lot bigger than I was. You know, I was, I was really the small kid, kind of changed my role. Uh, I was more just like a shooter, you know. Uh, same thing in high school, you know, still was a very small kid. Freshman year, you know, I was playing point guard on the freshman team. Uh, but then when I got moved up to JV and varsity, you know, my role really stick to just being a shooter. Didn't really have the ball in my hands a lot. Uh, couldn't really do all the things that I was able to do now. I would always play basketball on weekends and weekdays with my friends in like open gyms. And this, this wasn't high school basketball. And I'd play pretty well, you know, like my, my friends would know how good I was at basketball at the time. It, I didn't really get to, to show it in high school because, you know, my role was, was just to be a shooter and not really do anything le more or less. Um, but in, in open gyms, I go to LA Fitness, uh, my local community centers, and we play five on five open gyms. And I'd play pretty well. I'd, like, I'd play point guard, dribble up, make plays for people. And it was fun. That, uh, playing with my friends and, and them always telling me, you know, pretty good, definitely always boosted my confidence. I met him, I believe, in 2012 at a, at a basketball court. I didn't know who he was. I just saw him there and I was playing basketball against him. And uh, he was really good, obviously better than I was. So I guess into the summer after that, I wound up seeing him at a summer camp. And I instantly recognized him and we just made a bond off of that, knowing each other, seeing each other before. And that's how we became friends. We would go play pickup basketball and Every time I played with him, we won. Like he was a very dominant force. He was very, very, very free. Like he, you can see the joy in his game. Now, on, as opposed to him being on the high school court, he was a little bit restricted uh, with the system and all that. But as soon as he played just on the court with random people, you could see his, like his game flourish and he really became who he really was. My mom was a, was a big preacher of that, you know, putting God first and, you know, uh, also believing in everything happening for a reason. You know, yeah, my mom's death was, was hard on me, but you know, you can always look at the, at the positives and, and I can say that she wasn't struggling here on earth anymore. And now she's in a, in a much better place and she doesn't have to go through any of that. Nearing my mom's death, uh, her and her sister, my aunt would talk a lot about what, what was going to happen in the future. She, my mom would always tell you, if everything ever happens to me, Go to uh, Auntie Denise is her name, and she she really took things over after her passing. Uh, it was her idea to send me to the mom's best friend's son house, and and her son, Auntie Denise's son, my cousin, uh, I lived with him too. It was different, you know. It was it was it was three guys living together, um, but there there was still a lot of structure, you know. Maybe a lot of not a lot of people thought there was a lot of structure, but. You know, my mom's best friend, she lived right down the street and she'd always check in on me. Auntie Denise was always calling and, you know, Justin was a, Justin's name, my, my cousin. He was like a big brother for me, you know, he was always looking out for me and, and helping me whenever I needed it. And my aunt still wanted me to get an education, so I was taking online classes at UCF. I was, I was pretty committed to being a, a journalism student. You know, I was really making, I was already making connections. I wrote some articles for Fan Sighted. I, I, I did love to, to talk about basketball and write about it, but I, I, it was something I'd much rather play. Thank God that I was able to play in that tournament. Uh, we ended up going to the tournament first in Georgia. I actually almost leave, leave my shoes in, uh, in my friend's house. I was staying the night at my friend's house the night before. Luckily, right before we leave, he reminds me and I get my shoes. And who knows if I didn't bring my shoes, if, 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 anything, if all this would have even happened. But yeah, we ended up playing both in those both tournaments, and you know, uh, I got a lot of interest from uh, a lot of D2s and a couple D1s. You know, something I haven't really said yet is uh, there was a D2 called Lincoln Memorial, 
and it was really between like them and prep and I had decided on Lincoln Memorial at first and I was talking to the coaches there and uh, it, it was really like a done deal you know they were sending over paperwork for me to sign and, and we were gonna get this official but then uh, something just hit me you know and I, I, I really you know I didn't want to go there you know for the dreams and goals that I have I didn't know if going there was the best place you know so I ended up then uh, going to prep school. The prep, prep school was awesome, man. Uh, I've had, I met friends there, brothers I still talk to today, uh, and it was just basketball. I met Jason probably a few months into playing, I believe, I'd say, because it was, it was around 60-something uh, kids, maybe pushing 70 kids there. So it was a lot of guys that I really didn't meet at first, but when they first put our team together, um, I met them, and I think we played in Popka, Florida, at this this JUCO event or something like that, and uh, he's really really quiet. Uh, he didn't really talk much at first, but I think as like the year went on, the year went on, we kind of seen you really just he talked to a certain amount of people. It wasn't a lot of dudes, so we kind of just like brought him in our circle and uh, learned more about him. He just was a, a great person from the beginning, and he really surprised a lot of us as a player because we really didn't know him. We didn't know how talented he was, so. Uh, Man, it was just a pleasure getting to meet with him and play with him as well. When we first met, he was real quiet. But then when we got closer, I just, you know, he had a lot of personality to him. Um, Jason's really, the one thing about Jason, he's super humble. Like, he's really humble. Like, he did a lot of good things because at first, you know, we were playing uh, pickup games and he was doing a lot of good things. He was, you know, scoring a lot. And everyone was like really surprised by him because he was so quiet. But he was just so humble. Like, I'd be like, yo, that was a good move you did. He'd just be like, yeah. Like, he, was just, he wasn't like cocky or anything. He was really humble. I was on the B team at first, and the guy who had brought me there actually left. So then uh, everyone on the B team, you know, scrambled and went to a different, the A, C, or D team. I ended up going to the A team, and not a lot of coaches, coaches knew me. I didn't really play a whole lot. and. You know, I really wanted opportunity prep, at prep school because, you know, I thought that was the whole that was the whole point. That was the whole reason I went there, you know, to have a chance to show what I can do. And I didn't really feel like I was getting that. So one night, you know, my best friends that I'm living with, we were talking and they're both on the C team. And we were like, we should all play together. We had, we had been playing in open gyms together, being on the same team. And it, it was just so, so much fun. And, you know, we wanted the opportunity to have that together. But we, we talked to the C team coach. He said he'd put it together. We all played together and it was uh, it was very fun. We kind of had, we had days when prep school where we, we just play open gym. So we just play straight pickup and college coaches would come and watch us play. And one day we got put on the same team, like me, JJ, who was the other roommate and Jason, we got all put on the same team and we just dominated. Like we won every single game, no one beat us. We got, we got team switched a lot. Like I was on the B team and then we got it switched around and then I was back on like the C team. So Jason was on the A team and he wasn't really playing a lot. There was actually a dude in front of him that was getting way more minutes than him. And he was just kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say he struggled, but he wasn't doing, like I knew, I knew how he could play and he wasn't doing nowhere near that. So, you know, we had a conversation with our coach on the C team and he ended up playing with us in a tournament and we, we beat the team by like 20 points and it was just really fun. And then we kept playing like really good together. And that's what happened. And then he dropped a, we played a Franklin prep. I don't know if you, he dropped a triple double. And that's when coach noticed him and was like, okay, like I, I want you back. So then he got put back on the A team and ended up starting and got his spot back. He was like past first and past second. It was weird. It was super weird. And uh, playing with him just kind of, it elevated everyone's game because he wanted those shots for you. Sometimes probably more than you wanted for yourself. So. I remember certain times I'd probably pass up a shot and he'd just tell me like, shoot the ball, shoot the ball, please shoot or whatever. So I'm like, it's kind of weird. And I think uh, he kind of surprised us about how talented he was one-on-one -on -one because uh, it was me, Remy, Remy Robert, Remy Robert, he's here with me now. Uh, Isaiah Sulak, he's at Tennessee. We went to Isaiah's house in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And we played at like this little gym, Isaiah can get open. And I didn't really know he had those type of one-on-one -on -one skills because he always passes with us. So he was playing and hitting moves. A lot of the moves he's still hitting right now. And I was just like, the dude can play. I don't know what he's been doing, but he can definitely play for real. So <laughs> it was weird. It's super weird, but I loved playing with him. Uh, I was, he's, just, he's just a great player, like really great player. He's one of the players who I think can do 
a lot of everything. So, uh, man, it was an honor to play with him, really. It was after one of our tournaments uh, that we had just won. And, you know, I knew I needed some film because I didn't have any high school film. Uh, I didn't have anything to show coaches, you know. I know coaches were going to ask that if I wanted to be recruited. So I asked the prep school coaches for all the game film that we had. Um, and then on that eight-hour bus ride back to Tennessee, you know, I'm just screen recording all of my clips. And I, I finally finished that, and I sent it over to one of my friends down in Orlando. And he, he, he makes mixes, and he sent it back to me. And then the Believe Prep Academy Twitter page ended up posting it. Longo was the first one to reach out to me. And when I got that DM, I was like, wow, uh, wow, it actually, it actually worked out. I'm, I'm so grateful. I was deciding between Ohio and Longwood, and you know, a big thing in my decision was, am I going to be able to be able to play my game the way that I want to play? I didn't really care about weather, location. I just wanted a great culture with my teammates and a place where I could grow in myself. And Ben Vanderplas, who's my teammate, roommate, brother now, you know, uh, he was my host, and I really hit it off with him. Coach Saul Phillips at the time broke everything down. All the teammates, you know, loved playing with them, said you would be able to play your game, and that was really something I, I wanted. So when I when I first got here, you know, Coach Phillips pretty much laid out the plan. You know, Tavion Kirk was here, and he said, you know, you can play a nice backup role your freshman year and then pr progress as, as years go on. And I, and I was fine with that. I was saying, I was thinking possibly I can do more in my head when the, you know, fall and summer camps roll around to possibly prove myself. And that's what ended up happening, you know, it was, it was a battle every day and I was, I was happy I was able to contribute right away. Going from freshman to sophomore year, Ben, Connor Murrow and I knew that it was going to be a big year for us. You know, we, we, we have to be the leaders from this team and then, especially with Bulls bringing in a lot of freshmen, you know, we, we knew we had to be a, a big role and really step up. So that summer I was working hard on, on shooting, you know, making plays off the dribble, you know, having an increased role. And I, and I was, and I feel like I was ready for it. Uh, the turning point, I think, was Iona. And, you know, I, I was, I wasn't really, pa I wasn't really looking to score a lot. I was getting into the lane and I was passing. And there was one time out, Coach Bull said, you gotta look to score, you know, you're, you're getting there and, and the team needs you to score. Since then on, you know, I was looking to score the rest of the game. Uh, while still getting my teammates involved, but I was just playing a lot more aggressive. And I, and I liked how, how it turned out. We ended up winning that game. And from that moment on, you know, it really kicked in for, for me to be a scorer. He's coming out of a shell where he's never been a very vocal person. His leadership qualities from last year to this year have grown immensely. And really that's the next big step for him and, and understanding that his voice means something. But he's never been in a leadership role. I mean. You know, four or five years ago, he was averaging two points a game, never you know, playing in, on a varsity high school team. Um, so everything's new to him, and he wants to get better. He wants to be great. He's always watching video, always reading books, uh, any article I send him, and uh, you know, he's really grown as a leader. I would say more so the way Jason is as a person helped him with basketball. Like, he's a great basketball player, but the way he lives his life, you know, being genuine, uh, being caring and fair and hardworking, of course, that propelled him to the level he is today. He kind of let things take care of him, care of themselves, in a sense. To see a person uh, that has been through so much, I call one of my my brothers, my friends, uh, succeed at this level is it, it feels really good because you know he's been through so much, and now that everybody's starting to recognize it, you know it makes you feel that much better just to be able to to see one of your friends uh, be successful at this level and have a chance to succeed at the next level. So uh, for me, it's really everything. I know for the Believe Prep family, it's everything for the coaches who was there, uh, for pretty much everyone who's there. We always want our uh, guys to succeed. So seeing them do it at this level, uh, getting this notoriety, is great for all of us. Yeah, I think the, the future for Jason is bright. Um, I don't think he's near close to being, you know, how good or where he's gonna be, you know, in the next year, two years, two months, three months. And I like to equate it, if you really look at it, he's probably a freshman in college right now from basketball experience. You know, most most uh, college players play varsity their freshman, sophomore year. Like, he never played. You know, he scored two points a game his senior year. So really his, you know, prep school year was kind of one of his freshman years. And, and, you know, his freshman year here was his sophomore year. 
last year, you know, it was his junior year. So it's almost like he's a senior in high school from an experience standpoint. And I think that's encouraging because, you know, his best days are ahead of him.